Hey gang, welcome back to the channel. I'm Paul with Stud Pack in my Stud Pack green shirt today. Speaking of shirts, our website, studpack.com, is finally online and you can go there and get yourself your own Stud Pack merch. We appreciate all the support. You are all amazing and we appreciate each and every one of you. So let's start right here on the electric. This double gang box was right here. It serves the breakfast room and the kitchen. So I disconnected all the wires, pulled them out of the double top plates and came around and made up the switch again right here so that the owners could still operate those switches when they need them. And then you'll see hanging right here, circuit five and seven, that was for the old oven. This is aluminum wiring that'll be pulled out all the way back to the panel and we'll run new copper for the new oven. This one right here, circuit 10A, we label everything. A 20 amp dedicated line for the old microwave and we will certainly reuse that for the new kitchen. So let's head in the dining room, Jordan, and I'll show you what we did in there. So we had a dining room light switch right here. It was on circuit 14A, 15 amp circuit. It's right here. I disconnected all of that and made up the circuit up here because it feeds another part of the house. So that's our lighting circuit for the dining room. And if we come over here, these two are the receptacles for the living room, circuit 12B, made those up. And then let's go check this one out. This 20 amp circuit 11B, it was for a receptacle over here in the dining room. Once we had all the sheet rock down, it was easy to see the wire routing. So I just took that out and I coiled it up right here. Now notice, I didn't cut it here. I saved all that wiring because we can probably find a use for this. This will be perfect for some Christmas lighting on the front porch. Put a receptacle up there in the eave somewhere for the owners, they would love that. Right, for Christmas lights yeah, or something? So always leave the wires as long as you can. So let's head over here and take a look at that load bearing wall and I'll show you what it's holding up. So on this house, we are fortunate enough to have the original plans and they show that there is a footing under this wall and there's a footing under that wall. And that's enough to satisfy our engineer and our local building department. If it weren't, and I've had to actually do this before, I have a 12 inch long half inch drill bit and I'll actually drill in the slab. And usually once I get to about 12 inches deep, that satisfies the engineer that the concrete is thick enough. So my engineer prepared these drawings I know they're small, but remember, this is all done via email. And this was an attachment, and we sent this to the city. But all his specs are on here as far as the beam size, the spacing, the nailing, all that. So let's take a look at these walls and just see what they're holding up. Now, on this wall, we can see that it's holding up the ceiling joist, correct? All the way down. So we know we're going to have to support these temporarily. Otherwise, if we pull this wall out, that whole ceiling comes down. Now we also have a brace here that you can see. It's going up to the roof, as well as this one that's had a little bit of an angle. So we're gonna remove those two, but before we remove them, we're gonna replace them with a brace that's on top of our new wall. So we're gonna build a temporary wall right here to hold up the ceiling. And then that temporary wall will also support the roof load that's coming down on this brace and this brace. We're just gonna swing those over to the new wall. Now there's one more thing we gotta look at. Over here we have these short two by fours. So these blocks are nailed to the double top plate and to our rafter for our cathedral ceiling. And we're just gonna remove them because all they're doing is acting as drywall blocking. So we are ready to build this wall. I picked up all the eight foot studs this morning. All the bigger stuff is being delivered tomorrow by our local lumber company. So why don't we get out to the truck, get our tools and get this wall built.
All right, gang, you saw us get this wall up in the time lapse. That was quick. Now, we use the pneumatic nail gun. We use my framing gun for that. A lot of people like to use screws. It's just your choice, whatever you want to do. I find it's easier just to pop a nail in there and pull it out later. Next thing you saw us using was this stick. We've shown this before. It's exactly five feet long. I marked save on it so we don't use it for something else. And that helps me measure. I can put it on the bottom plate, put the top of my tape up there, and then I just add five feet to this dimension. That way I'm not on the ground trying to read a tape measure or bend it. You know what I'm talking about, right? So good tip to save your back and your knees. So our last step is to jump in the attic and we have these two braces supporting the roof. So I'm gonna jump up there and move those and Jordan's gonna stay on the ground and be my cut man. So let's get those moved and then we can remove this wall. Alrighty gang, all of our ceiling and roof loads are transferred to our temporary wall. Now we can safely remove this load bearing wall. I'm just gonna use my sledgehammer and knock these studs off the bottom plate. All right, gang, it's the next day. Jordan and I were beat yesterday after doing all that work. We're well rested and we're full of energy to install this beam. It's a lot of work. So what I'm gonna do on this beam, that beam gets installed right up here in this space. And the bottom of the beam is gonna be flush with the bottom of these two by six ceiling joists in the kitchen and the breakfast area. So that's where our beam goes there. But then how do I know where it ends here? So the plans call for a pantry to go right here. So this bottom plate or sill plate is gonna remain. And there'll be a new wall right here. And that's gonna be our walk-in pantry. And this will all be open to our kitchen living room right here. Now the plans call for three two by fours, a stud pack to hold up our beam. And then they call for two more studs acting as king studs on the end to go past the end of the beam. And we'll show you all that later. So basically we're gonna have five studs here and five studs on the other end. Five of these together is like seven and three quarter, I actually measured outside, but I'm gonna call it eight. I use my dot laser to transfer the end of this bottom plate to my top plate. So the reason I went eight inches back from here is because it's gonna be easier for me to build from this end back in this direction and cut off any extra rather than risk having this one overhanging a little bit. Do not want that at all. That's the reason for going a little bit more than we need on this bottom plate. And we're only sacrificing a fraction of an inch yeah. in the pantry. Yeah. Right. Less than half. I measured eight inches back, and this is my cut line for my top plates. We're going to make a cut here, cut at the opposite end, and pull both of these down. So now that we have this end established, let's walk over there and talk about that end. All right, gang, on this end of our beam, it's going to sit on a post in this area. And this wall stays. So this mark right here on the floor is the end of my cabinet run. So we're gonna have a lower cabinet here and an upper cabinet here in the same spot. They're gonna end at the same spot. And the upper cabinet is actually gonna have crown running around it and is gonna have to die into the wall. So if this is the end of the cabinet run, I'm gonna make the end of my wall right here. That gives me three inches for that crown to die into. So now our beam support is gonna be right here. This stud's in our way. So we're going to add one more here on our temporary wall and get rid of this one. We're also going to cut that drywall back just like we did over there. 
Then we'll lay out our marks for our top plate and cut it and remove that top plate. Let's get it done. There's our bean pocket ready to go. It was a lot of work to get to this point. Now all we need is some lumber. As a matter of fact, I think I hear a truck outside. Let's go see if that's our guy. If it is, I'm glad he's here. I've had a bad feeling about this lumber delivery all day. Alrighty guys, there's our lumber, but you know what? It's all two by fours, no LVLs. So I called my guy at the lumber yard. He said it'll be next week before they're delivered. So really disappointed in that, but kind of a typical thing contractors run into. You promise one thing, but you delivered another. But why don't we take a break from being inside, cut these straps off, put this lumber under the carport for the weekend, and we'll take a couple of these 10 footers in there and show you the beam detail on the end. Alrighty guys, we've got all the wood under the carport, protected from the weather. But before we go inside, check this out. We did a little dumpster diving. I went home last night, read all your comments about this oven, and you know what guys, you were absolutely right. So we pulled it out of the dumpster, we cleaned it up, put a sign on it, and we're gonna bring it to the street, and I bet it's gone before those beams get here. <laughs> this is a huge subdivision. I'm sure there's somebody here who has an oven that doesn't work. And that old cooktop, that glass top cooktop, Two of the burners didn't work and it didn't even have any knobs and the glass is cracked. So it's trash, but we're gonna save this. Let's get it out to the street. Alrighty guys, we're back inside. We brought one of the 10 foot two by fours in here to show you what our king stud's gonna look like. And we're just gonna let it run long into the ceiling just in case we need that to attach some bracing to or something. There's no need to cut it. So we'll have two king studs and then three jacks holding up the beam. What's that called, three jacks? It's a stud pack. <laughs> we'll talk about that next time. There was something on the nailing schedule for all these studs that I was kind of concerned about. So the structural engineer is actually re reworking that for me. So along with that and the fact that the beams aren't here, we're gonna call it a day. We've done as much as we could. This beam, as you can see, it's gonna be easy from here on out. But the best part is, once we get that one in, we can hit this one, probably the same day. And my goal is to get this one up and this one up. Same day, probably two days. There's a lot here that we have to move and support. 
So that's going to be really exciting. We can't wait to show the owners the open concept that they've been dreaming of for 20 years since they've been living here. So that's going to be a wrap on this video, gang. We hope you enjoyed it. Smash that like button if you haven't already. Subscribe, drop us a comment, ask a question, and we'll see you on the next one.